we have made the process for open source users to get to the next step in their journey, which is to onboard an API gateway. We have made that journey much more seamless now. Hi, this is your host of Bhartia, and we are here at KubeCon and CloudedCon in Paris. And today we have with us once again, Sudeep Goswami, now CEO of Traffic Lab. Sudeep, it's great to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. This is the first day of the event. Tell us about your experience so far at this event. Yeah, this is, we have been doing KubeCon since the very beginning. And this time, the feedback I'm getting from prospects and also from my own team is that the energy is very different. And we have more people here and the discussions are much more balanced in terms of technical details, as well as people wanting to understand how to take the next step and implement this technology. Thank you, now let's talk about your presence at the event. Did you folks make any announcement at the event? There are a number of things that we have announced this week. Uh, number one is um, our overall messaging, we have made it much more simpler for people to understand uh, and that's aided A by new things that we have launched, but it's also based on the feedback that we've gotten and the new message is resonating very well, which is really about a journey that we're taking our users through. People who are starting with Kubernetes, they are typically starting with an application proxy where they want to use a reverse proxy, a load balancer, ingress controller to expose their services. And then the next step of the journey is for them to onboard an API gateway with capabilities around authentication authorization. And then they can go all the way in this journey now and embrace API management lifecycle uh, technology. So they can do things like versioning, they can do more granular access control, they can do developer portals and provide that holistic API experience. And that message is resonating quite well. Talk about the updates that you folks announced recently. So there's three things that we have uh, announced this week. The first is we have made the process for open source users to get to the next step in their journey, which is to onboard an API gateway. We have made that journey much more seamless now. And so we have launched a new product. It's the API gateway, but it is designed and purpose-built for Kubernetes. Much more lightweight, very much focused on the Kubernetes architecture. And it's a two-step process now to go from open source to the API gateway. You simply run a Helm install command, you install the new binary, you remove the old binary, you preserve all your existing configuration, and now you just have enhanced capabilities. And given the size and volume of open source users that we have, uh, as of uh, now, we have over 3.2 billion downloads that have happened, so it's a, it's a very broad spectrum of companies and users using this and to be able to deliver something so compelling to them uh, is pure joy for us. And I mean, we're seeing the results right at the booth. Everybody who's listening to this and seeing it in action is like, they're, they're wowed by the experience. So that's the first thing that we announced. And the second thing that we've announced are two things around security. The first one, and this is a, this is a major uh, change or addition, I should say, for our portfolio is uh, the introduction of a web application firewall, a WAF, into our portfolio. And we're doing this first by releasing it to the open source community, uh, which is a big plus, going back to our 3.2 billion download users. Putting a WAF in their hands and getting that feedback is going to be immense, immensely helpful. So we have released this now, and we're doing it with the community. So this is a community project it's the Coraza WAF and the Coraza rule set that we have now integrated into our product that puts the WAF in the hands of people and now the WAF can be used architecturally with the API gateway, which is becoming a big requirement uh, from the regulatory standards perspective. So that's update number two. And update number three, also around security, is going into the API management realm we are now providing granular access control at the API level. So for example, if you have, if you're a publisher of APIs and if you're monetizing on those APIs, you now have the ability to lock down what specific operations can be done at the API level. So if you have an API, you only want to allow a get operation or a post operation or an update operation, you can lock it down because it goes back to the mantra 
playing the offensive game in the security world is the best defense. You don't want to wait for the threat to come to you and then you are, you want to stop it way ahead. So by creating this offensive posture gives you the best defense. And that's what the product update is all about. One um, important note uh, when we release the, the web application firewall is this is not to replace the existing API security vendors that you're already using. So if you're using a no-name, a traceable, salt security and others, this nicely complements those technologies because it creates an overall comprehensive defensible posture where you need the WAF at the API gateway layer, but you also need a holistic API security tool that can analyze everything that's happening in your environment. So you're blocking day zero and the most common attacks that are known out there. Let's talk about these security updates. What does it mean for PCI DSS 4.0? What's happening uh, from the WAF perspective, the web application firewall, PCI DSS 4.0, I mean, they've had the, the requirement to have the technology that a WAF, pro, or the capabilities that a WAF provides for some time. Uh, and currently, the, the requirements say that it should be, they strongly suggest that you should implement such a technology. What's going to happen a year from now, by the end of March 2025, it is going to become a mandatory thing, without which you will not pass PCI compliance, which is a big thing. So we are getting ahead of this, and we're putting this capability in the hands of our users now, so they can start to test it, they can start to operationalize it. So by the time this mandate comes, they're ready and they're prepared. Are there any specific industries, organizations, verticals, who are targeted with these updates? I think the most uh, the, the, the obvious one is going to be the, the financial industry where you know a lot of the, the PCI data resides. But uh, what has happened over the last few years is almost every digital company is becoming a payments company. They take payments of some sort uh, on their digital platforms. And every one of them are going to be um, pretty much subjected to this requirement. Now, if they're keeping the PCI data, they have to comply to these rules. So this is much broader than the f financial services industry. Every retail you can think of, every online platform, it's the, the scope is much broader now. And, and that makes it even more of a critical building block in these modern API architectures that you must have a WAF. Now, I must say one thing to our users. Having a WAF is not the end all and be all. And from a traffic lab standpoint, the reason we're uh, putting this technology out there is because we play a critical role at the API gateway layer. And the WAF makes sense at the API gateway layer. But we have a very uh, strong preference for our users to look at security holistically. So for example, you want to use uh, the WAF with us but you also want to look at the architecture uh, more holistically and you want to look at other vendors that provide a more holistic um, posture from a security standpoint. So uh, vendors that are doing AIML algorithms, looking at day zero attacks. The WAF's not going to protect you from day zero attacks. So you want to make sure you use the WAF with additional technologies so you have pretty much full coverage. Security is as much about culture as it's about technology and product. Can you talk about what role is Traffic Labs playing in bringing the cultural change that is needed within organizations? How do you folks become a catalyst to that change? Yeah, I think uh, the part we are playing in that is we believe in the zero trust approach and the zero trust principle when it comes to security. So principle of least privilege. And from our perspective, the enabling uh, aspect of it is we, because our platform has been designed to be fully declarative from day one, everything is expressed as code. So you are able to lock down specific things from the very beginning, things that should not be exposed, they should be locked down, right? This is where the granular access control example I gave earlier. It's like, if you don't want this endpoint to have these operations, lock them down. Don't keep them open, because that fosters this principle of least privilege. You know, that's just one. So by design principles, you only enable things that are, that are needed to be enabled. So your architecture has to be modular. And because we're cube native, we directly fit into that, uh, that mindset of 
run what you need, block everything else, and, and augmenting that with something like a WAF, which says, if I see an attack, I'm just gonna stop it right there. Regardless of what my backend is, I may have blocked it on the backend or I may not have, but I'm not gonna let the threat get there, right? It's almost like the front door is gonna be locked down, so nothing's coming through the front door that looks, you know, uh, suspect. Now let's go and talk about the API updates. Of, of course, Kubernetes adoption is growing and uh, with this adoption also comes complexity. Talk about the role of API management and how you folks are making it easier for organizations to deal with this complexity. The reality is uh, Kubernetes is a complex architecture to onboard. It's got a lot of benefits, but it's not for the weak hearted. So Kubernetes, our philosophy is Kubernetes is complex enough. We don't want to make it more complex. So we want to do our part in simplifying it. And therefore, the things that we're providing, ease of migration, being able to seamlessly insert into your Kubernetes architecture and provide the functionality with the, taking the least amount of footprint, taking the least amount of configuration needed, and enabling this journey that people go through uh, when they go on Kubernetes, which is around a microservices architecture, and being able to expose those microservices to the outside world with the least amount of configuration, least footprints, highest performance, and enabling everything as code so people can do GitOps, because automation is the way out of this complexity. So everything that we're designing and offering enables and fosters this automation, this everything as code mentality that should simplify their worlds. Let's also talk about the importance of open source for traffic labs. Yeah, so today if, if you look at the, the huge open source community that we have, the good news is 70 to 80% of that is already using Kubernetes. So our base is very Kubernetes strong and we put out the open source uh, solution for them to embrace. And that's why the next step for us, the next logical step for us is for those Kubernetes users, how do we make the next step easier? As they want to add more capabilities, and maybe they want a commercial uh, engagement with us and get new capabilities, it shouldn't look like a lift and shift. It should be a much more gradual, non-disruptive, much more seamless process. And, and that's what we're offering to the, uh, with these updates, that's what we're offering to the new uh, Kubernetes users who have been using us on the open source version. Of course, I do want to talk about the hottest topic these days, Gen AI LLMs. What does Gen AI LLMs mean for Traffic Labs? I think there are, there are various applications of Gen AI uh, at Traffic Lab or the technologies that we provide and the stack in which we operate it. Um, Gen AI is broadly applicable to many environments and I, think, I don't think we're the exception to that. Uh, they are, because we are sitting in the runtime, what we provide essentially are runtime solutions where your most critical traffic is going through. Gen AI will help us help our user base troubleshoot better because you're going to be able to make sense of the error messages that the system is putting out there. It's going to help you quickly triangulate what the problem is, where the problem is. But then also the fact that we are sitting on this vast amount of runtime data that our customers have, they can use that and with our support for open telemetry, which produces logs, metrics, and traces, I mean, that, this is like gold for any kind of Gen AI model, is the more real-time data and contextual data that you can feed it, the better those models are gonna be. So although we're not announcing any Gen AI specific things at this conference, uh, the future looks bright from a Gen AI perspective. So I'll just leave it at that. We talked about messaging, we talked about technology. Now let's talk about you. You recently took the helm of Traffic Labs as the CEO. What vision are you bringing to the company as a CEO? When we look at Traffic Labs, what role are you playing in this large ecosystem here? So Traffic Labs was started uh, in an era when there was no Kubernetes. It was started pre-Kubernetes, but it was still cloud native. And we have built an amazing set of technologies and enablers over the number of years. 
So my job as a CEO really, first and foremost, is to make sure that we are sending the best message out there to our user community so they understand the breadth and depth of the solutions that we provide. Obviously, Kubernetes is a big focus for us, but we also support non-Kubernetes environments, environments such as HashiCorp Nomad, Azure Service Fabric, even Docker Swarm installations, Amazon ECS, and many VM environments. So we see the world as heterogeneous. And I think that is the, the vision that we have, that is the value proposition that we have. So my job as a CEO is to make sure we tell that story so people understand uh, what we do and how we're differentiated. That's number one. Number two is I want to make sure that our open source roots and heritage stays intact. It is really, really important. And I want to make sure that we continue to do more. And the announcements that you saw, we just released a major version of our open source, V3, which is in release candidate right now. That was announced last month. GA should happen soon. That's again a big push towards making sure we are committed to open source and delivering value. The web application firewall, the reason we announced it to the open source community first, again, it goes back to that commitment to open source. So I want to make sure that we continue to do that. And then the last thing I would say is, our company is started in Europe, in Lyon, France, where it's headquartered. I am based in the US, and we have a huge audience in the US that value and would benefit from what we have to bring. So my job is to make sure that we amplify the brand and we're able to tell the story at a global plat on, a, on a global stage. Sudeep, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Traffic Lab, the whole ecosystem. Thanks for great insights, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Always a pleasure to speak with you.